We're driving a BMW X1. It's all new for 2023. Coming up, we're going to share a feature that you will love if you're a driver who is nervous when parking, but you're also extremely patient. First, information explosion. BMW X1 is a subcompact SUV that is one of the cheapest ways to get into the BMW brand. Let's begin with interior. The X1 looks like it's built for futurism and fun. You want to know why? Why? <laughs> speed holes in the door handle, speed holes on the steering wheel. You're just going to be going so fast in this car, you need speed holes. Also, there's this huge handle right here, and most fun, there is a little bar to hold your cell phone in place because it looks like it's about to go on a roller coaster ride. I also really like the hatch pattern that's on the speaker grades and the vent and also the roller coaster ride for your cell phone and the volume knob. It's also, I think, a very livable space. You've got big cup holders here that don't impede with any controls. You've got really great door storage. You've got a little a bit of center console storage here, just a thin slot where you can put your flying eye sunglasses. And then there's a lower area right, right here. It's kind of awkward to access from this side, but it's actually more more awkward to access from that side. There's this big plastic piece blocking access to the front part here. I'm also very pleased that they've included rear vents. Speaking of the back seats, as the ultimate average five foot 10 inch American male, I fit back there really well behind my preferred front seat position. The seat sits up in front high enough that my feet fit easily under it for a little extra space. Headroom is good. From a passenger space perspective, I think the X1 kind of pushes the boundaries of what a subcompact SUV is. Like in a good way. I meant that as a compliment. <laughs> Another element I like about the back seats, you can recline them and not every small uh, SUV has that feature. One oddity is that in other markets outside the United States, you can slide the rear seats forward and back. This one still has rails and it looks like you should be able to slide them, but you cannot. Shifting back up to the front seats, there's another feature that's missing, lumbar support. They do offer it in other markets and I know that because if you open up the uh, owner's manual, it will show you that along with how you um, slide the rear seats forward and back. Just to taunt you. Taunting. The front seats are really firm and they also have a lot of bolstering right here to hold you in place. So I can imagine that will come in handy when you start driving in a more speedy fashion later. Yes, yeah, I do like that bolstering for keeping me in place. Uh, the downside is that there's enough bolstering here that when I'm trying to move my arm uh, in sporty nine and three steering fashion, it uh, hits my elbow a little bit and impedes my arm movement. Another area where the X1 excels is cargo space, 25.7 cubic feet of space, which is really quite good. And I also like the fact that there's a little bit of an underfloor storage area. It is filled with a spare tire, which I do not mind. There's a little extra space there you could use, but I like the fact that the um, the floor, you can just um, flip it back and then up and it'll stay in position. Let's say you do have a flat and you need to get to that spare. It's just really easy to get to. Oh, and the power hatch is standard. Kiddo, how do you find it getting in and out of the BMW X1? Yeah, our kiddo was having a little bit of issue with the door handle, but uh, I think she's adjusted her position now and she's getting the hang of it. What about step-in height? Any issues climbing in? And then what about getting the booster seat installed? The booster was simple to install. The latch points are covered by plastic covers, which move out of the way easily. No issues. That's true. It was so simple, our kiddo was able to install it herself. But you'll have to trust us because we didn't get B-roll of it. As for safety, the NHTSA has not rated the BMW X1, but the IIHS has named it a top safety pick plus. As for active safety features, you've got lane keeping assist, standard automatic emergency braking. There are also eight airbags in here, and I believe in some markets there are knee airbags, but not in America. Another helpful feature is active blind spot detection, which will let you know with a little indicator in the mirror area if there is a vehicle in your blind spot. And then if you use your turn signal, it will warn you with a vibration through the steering wheel that you shouldn't make that lane change. So uh, for all the BMW drivers who use their turn signal, that would be really helpful. You're welcome, Rick. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of catty, wasn't it? <laughs> what do we think? Is the BMW X1 family friendly? Family Yay! friendly. Yeah, small family friendly. Rear window test. Almost all the way down. Boop. 
armrest test. The seat is, is in its lowest position. Wait, yeah, now it's in its lowest position. And my elbow just barely touches if my hand's still on the steering wheel on the inboard and the outboard. Uh, I kind of can't make it work. Firm, but uh, yielding enough. I'm gonna go 80% inboard and 50% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If you would, you're welcome to subscribe. Style. The first thing that jumped out to me is that this is super cute. Unlike the other BMWs, which kind of look a little bit aggressive, mm -hmm. I think it's because the front grille is nicely proportioned for the size of the vehicle and it's small, but then I noticed something sinister. The what is it? What is it? Tell us now. Tell us. <laughs> the front grille totally looks like Freddy Krueger fingers. Yeah. It is secretly aggressively styled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll discover in your dreams. Modern BMW design seems to branch into two different categories. One is a little more traditional, and then the other is just kind of weird. This is one of the more traditional versions of BMW design, and I think, at least for our taste, it works pretty well. I particularly like it in this color. I want to call it York Peppermint Patch. Cape York Green Metallic. This color costs $650, and I'd probably spring for it because I think it's very attractive. In fact, most colors are either $650 or $1,200. If you want to not spend extra on your BMW paint color, your choices are white white and black. Also note that the one we're driving has the M Sport exterior package and it looks a little bit sporty. By comparison, here's what the basic model looks like. Last note, we've got 8.1 inches of ground clearance. We are not going to take this thing off road, but if you live in a mountain community like we do where you get snow, having a little bit of extra clearance before the snow plow comes is pretty helpful. We like the look of the BMW X1, but what do you think? Do you like the BMW X1? If so, if no, tell us in the comments in motion. Very quickly, let me thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eye Sunglasses. You know we wear them in the helicopter, you know we wear them in our daily lives. If you're curious why these are the lightest, most durable, most comfortable eyewear we've ever experienced, you can click the link in the description below. It'll take you to Flying Eye. So if you're ready for aviation grade eyewear, you can use the promo code MICA to save 10% on Flying Eyes. See, they do that too. Cool, huh? Driving the BMW X1, I find ride quality to be very BMW-like. Firm, but not uncomfortable. I describe it as athletic absorption, which kind of also sounds like it could be like a sweat thing. <laughs> An intimate sweat thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let's not make it weirder than it needs to be. <laughs> Sorry, you already did. The end result is that you feel the road, but it doesn't hurt you. And less chafing. <laughs> Sweetie. <Sorry. laughs> I really like how the X1 steers. It feels like a BMW. You've got this thick steering wheel. It's kind of satisfying to hold, like a big bratwurst or something. Very, very predictable as you turn in. It's not too quick, not too slow. And at least for my taste, even going into sport mode here, I don't find the efforts to be excessively high. But then again, I got these ripped manly arms. Oh man. Oh, I mean, hey, hey, careful. You might, might experience some chafing. <laughs> now, if you do experience some chafing, consider some athletic absorption. And the one we're driving has the adaptive uh, M suspension. So it's got a little bit more of a flexible nature depending on what you're driving over. One of the things that's so impressive about the BMW X1 is that this, this is the base engine. Zero to 60 times is like 6.2 seconds. That's quick for a subcompact SUV. Very impressive. And then I'm just going to floor it. Whee! Swift reactions. What I found is that off the line, it takes a quick beat for it to really come into its full power. But if you're already driving, it gains speed really quickly. We also have a seven speed dual clutch transmission. I find the gear changes to be prompt and dual clutches sometimes at low speed can have a herky jerky feel. And I haven't noticed that here. To round things out, let's see if I can come to a smooth stop. Now this is a little bit of an awkward surface here, but let me see, nice firm pedal feel and Good, feels nice. All right, that's what I think, but let's see what Sweetie thinks. If he's at the wheel, you're about to accelerate to the right. Tell me, do you have enough power off the line? Yeah. Which is fun because you did not press the accelerator fully. <laughs> What's weird about accelerating the BMW X1 is that the power really comes on strong as you start to move up in the rev range. So it kind of feels like it's not as punchy off the line as you'd want it to be. But actually, it's plenty punchy off the line. It's just extra powerful as it comes into its rev range. As you drive around our windy mountain town, do you like how it steers? It feels 
engaging. I like it. There's a few different modes to play around with here. Um, I don't know what Expressive is going to do to you, but it's got some impressive visualizations and vibrant lighting events. Ooh. So this is a small vehicle, and you tend to gravitate towards those because they're uh, not quite so much to manage. How are you finding it? I really appreciate the size of the X1. Any issues with sight lines? Despite the really thick pillars, I have no issues with sight lines. So overall, would you say you're feeling pretty comfortable driving the BMW X1? Absolutely. Brilliant. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, I think the BMW X1 is both fun and livable. Moving on, we're to emotion factor. I think the brand BMW comes with a lot of its own emotion factor. The premium quality of the interior, the driving dynamics, the signifier that you have succeeded enough in life to buy a BMW. That's a huge one. We're feeling some emotion here, but what do you think? Are you feeling emotionally drawn to buy a BMW X1 of your very own? If you are, you might need to sell your current car first. Click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below to learn what your car is worth and what you should pay for a BMW X1. Onward to remarks. In the beginning of the video, we teased that there is a feature where if you are a nervous parker, but you're also extremely patient, you will love this feature. There's an automatic parking feature built into the uh, BMW X1 that we're driving where it will automatically back itself out of a parking spot. It manages the steering, the brakes, and the accelerator. I was at the, uh, the mall and there was a car waiting for me and their light was on. I was like, let's let this thing do its thing. Okay, it's doing it. It's uh, doing the steering. It's, we're finally kind of almost far enough out. I'm just like, I'm taking over. I just got to do this. There's another feature in here, uh, backup assistant. If you ever drive up a long winding driveway and you want to get back down, this will do it automatically because it can retrace uh, where it went. Very, very cool features, but uh, at least for that automatic backup assist for parking, you need to be patient. Moving on to infotainment, we've got this one curved piece of glass, a 10.7 inch touchscreen over here, 10.25 inch driver information display. This is iDrive 8. It includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless as standard. If you're a person who likes to have lots of different options and to be able to reorganize things, you'll probably enjoy this. There's a lot to do here. If you like things a bit simple because you are easily overwhelmed and confused by things, you might not like this. You were talking about yourself in the second part, weren't you? Yes. There is some complexity here. Familiarity will help. Most of the climate controls are up here in the screen as well which can be a little hard to operate for me while I'm driving, although they are very large and clear. Oh, and I'll also add, we don't have a volume knob. We do have a volume roller down here, which I think works well enough. It's got kind of a nice tactile quality. Ooh, it does. I'll just be poking this for a while. I also really like the 360 degree camera system, a lot of different angles, very clear, and I find it pretty easy to use. And then looking out there over the hood, I have a head up display, uh, which shows some information that works just fine. New for the BMW X1, you can use your iPhone as your key. And what's super cool is you don't even have to take it out. You can just leave it in your pocket and it'll be like, hey, here you are, uh, hop on in. Earlier we talked about a few missing features. One feature I wish was present here, ventilated front seats. I got that sweaty back situation. All right, it's time for everybody's favorite segment, the Musio Family Smell Test. Our daughter doesn't like new car smell, and we know some people might agree with her. Kiddo, how do you like the smell of this vehicle? Is it good, bad, or just okay? Thumbs down. Oh, no, she doesn't like the smell of the BMW X1. And that was the Musio Family Smell Test. All right, let's talk engine choices. The basic engine is two liters and turbocharged. Then new for 2024, the X1 is available as an M35i, which means more power and speedier acceleration from zero to 60. With either X1 model, all wheel drive comes standard. Sweetie? Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. Our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. For our trim recommendation, we would say that the base model is well equipped. Uh, it has dual zone climate control, that curved screen setup with navigation, a power tailgate, but it lacks smart key access. So we'd recommend adding $1,950 worth of convenience package to enjoy wireless phone charging, a panoramic roof, and smart key access, a feature I will not live without. Grand total, right about 41 grand. 
As for BMW X1 competitors, we might put it up against the GLA or GLB, the Audi Q3, the Volvo XC40, and the Lexus UX. The X1 is pricier than most of that competitive set, but it is well equipped. And if you're curious what we thought about the Lexus UX, you can click right up here. Last thought, my daytime employer at Kelly Blue Book thought the BMW X1 was such a great subcompact SUV, they named it a 2023 Best Buy. All right, that's all we got. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the BMW X1, it is a well-rounded and responsible indulgence. To me, it is the Evie Museo made cauliflower smoothie of subcompact SUVs. So responsible. Wow. And at least to her, tasty. Delicious. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the BMW X1. May I have a five and a five? And you, come get your high five. Bam.